Great to have you back, DK. Welcome. Nice to see you. Um, you've been doing some work looking at uh, hedge funds and mutual funds that are leaning into a bet of that you could argue is soft landing-like, right? That would be uh, the data that we looked at, which is the ownership of uh, mutual funds relative to their benchmarks and looking at hedge funds in terms of their popular positions. And from a statistical basis or a track record, that portfolio of companies that are overweight and, uh, and popular among the hedge funds have had a, a long track record of outperforming. About 58% of the time, they tend to outperform. And you have a variety of companies in there. Uh, for example, uh, Visa, you look at uh, you know, you know, Wells Fargo, you can look at Humana, you can look at uh, some of the companies in different industries where the analytics behind the mutual funds and hedge funds basically um, correspond and they tend to overweight those stocks. Right. So is it fair to say that that is a bet on a soft landing or a cyclical uh, recovery? Well, I think that's the view we would have, and those are stocks that tend to do well in that kind of environment. And that would be uh, to the backdrop we look at, which is basically about 1% GDP growth rate, which is basically leading to uh, modest sales growth at the top line. But basically, the idea of margins compressing would suggest that uh, there's not much earnings growth, which is why the market would likely be flat in the coming year. And so we're looking at companies that are more fundamentally driven, can outperform in that some muted economic backdrop. So just to dig into, the, into that a little bit more, I mean, you note that 2023 will be about the lack of EPS growth, while 2022 is about valuation decline. What are your different uh, scenarios? Soft landing versus recession, for example, or a stronger recession, for example? So the baseline forecast is that you have modest economic growth. But unfortunately, there's not much earnings growth. And so, therefore, it relies solely on valuation to drive the return to the overall market. And given where interest rates are and the likelihood that interest rates are likely to rise, difficult to envision a scenario where you have multiples expand beyond where we are now. Mm -hmm. So the market multiple trades are somewhere between 17 and 18 times. That's around the 80th percentile versus history. So there's experiences when the market multiple is higher, just not that often. Relative interest rates, however, Equities are even more highly valued, like the 85th percentile. And that's, uh, that's I think, a, a headwind. So therefore, if valuations are roughly at these levels, that's an optimistic scenario, in my opinion, uh, and earnings, not much earnings growth, then you have a, basically a flat, a flat market. On the other hand, if you had a recession, it's not the base case, but you had earnings probably drop uh, in the order of 11% next year, and that would suggest the market basically ends at, in a year's time, maybe 3750 uh, So I think 4000 to 3750 is the kind of a range that you're likely to see. Near term, downside risk around 3,600. Why is that the case? It's because we have a scenario of uh, negative earnings revisions. Earnings have been revised down uh, pretty significantly in the, last, uh, in the last several months as earnings for next year. So, so I realize the recession scenario is not your base case, but it does represent a big, I guess, uh, void in terms of where stocks and you know could move next year and, and what those valuations could ultimately, ultimately look like. So do you... Hold, Pat, with your suggestions for where to put your money regardless of the scenario that plays out. Well, what's the backdrop? The backdrop that is most common in either a modest economic growth environment or a recession is that inflation is likely to come down. And inflation falling from above trend rates, that is consistent in both those scenarios. And the stocks that do well in that, in that environment so, yes. uh, tend, to be, tend to be some of the healthcare companies, for example, consumer staples. Those are stocks that in industries. We can look at medical devices as an example of some, in fact, um, pharmaceuticals, telecom stocks. Those are done ones that historically have done well in a high inflation but falling inflation environment. And that's likely to be the environment whether we end up in a recession or not. Um, and that's, I think, the more important backdrop.